an hour, but first, back for a new series. Jonathan Ross. It's only TV, but I like it. And welcome to a brand new series. Where would we be without its only TV but I like it? Well, you'd be deprived of the top TV trivia panel game and I'd be living in a far smaller house. <laughs> so where have our captains been whilst we've been away? Well, over the winter, Julian Clare has been in panto and it's the first time that the chant, oh yes he is, has been met with, we all know. <laughs> Phil Jubitus had a traditional Essex Christmas. He dressed up in a fancy suit and pleaded not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Joining Julian this week from the Big Breakfast is the lovely Lisa Rogers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Whilst working as a researcher, Lisa Rogers apparently had sex in the famous mastermind black chair. Is that true? I can't possibly comment. Well, amazingly, she's still lost to a train driver from Nantwich. <laughs> <laughs> On Julian's right is Nasty Nick. <laughs> Nasty Nick is, of course, famous for his Machiavellian duplicity, or as we call them, lies. <laughs> his biggest whoppers included claiming to be a top city broker, claiming he was in the Territorial Army, and claiming to have appeared on a show called Night Fever on Channel 5. <laughs> that is a fifth channel. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty Nick, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> With Phil this week is the one and only Mr. Ainsley Harriot. <laughs> the Governor. Ainsley claims he had his jacket ripped off his back after appearing at the Good Food Show in Birmingham. They'll eat anything in the Midlands, won't they? <laughs> and completing the lineup from Brookside, Claire Sweeney, ladies and gentlemen. According to one interview, Claire likes fruit machines and chivalry. So, on a first date out, she likes her men to hold her melons for her. <laughs> <laughs> it's Claire Sweeney, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so there you go. Have a look around. We've got two birds, a gay man and Ainsley Harriet. Greg Dunk, if you're watching, as soon as we get that ramp fitted, we'll have a full house for you. <laughs> first round this evening is TV Trivia, where the teams are given three clues to help them identify an infamous moment from TV history. Philstein, you can go first. From the outside, the Punch and Judy pub in Bournemouth seemed a reasonable place to pop in for a quiet lunchtime drink. But don't be put off by the strange grunts and groans coming from within, for Bournemouth has become the European centre for arm wrestling. Take me back to my sweet la vida. <laughs> All that thought, I just need a pass. Uh, Chucky! Oh. I have to say, it's nice to see a fat bloke getting some. <laughs> I thought there was a quota. <laughs> you know, you're chivalry there. Hold that thought, I'm going for a piss. Oh, <laughs> that's pillow talk. That's why we're all lesbians in Brookside. <laughs> oh, we all look like that. Get out of here. In the gay world, um, large men are very popular. There's a club, they've got their own club called Bulk. <laughs> you heard of it? Well, you know, I was uh, offered the, the golden membership, but I wasn't sure what that entailed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got the mussels, the tongue and ginger, and you can cook anything in ginger. Is it all food with you, Ainsley? Oh, yes. <laughs> anything you can get your tongue into, you know. <laughs> you can cook anything in ginger. Oh, yeah. Could you boil an egg in her? <laughs> if she had flu, probably, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, sitting there in your jumper? <laughs> See, coming on this show, man-made fibre. Oh. I had a ring on when I arrived. <laughs> 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 Indeed. Isn't that um, TFI? When Kylie snogged Jerry Halliwell? So you're thinking there's a little bit of kissing going on on TFI between two ladies, and that's yeah, what it's thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you are, of course, right. Very well done. It is, of course, the moment on TFI Friday when Jerry Halliwell snogged Kylie Minogue. Let's remind ourselves. <laughs> Kylie 
Kylie there, misunderstanding the floor manager's instruction to snog the annoying ginger one. <laughs> TFI was famously stand by the ITC after Evans reduced a schoolboy to tears live on air. But come on, fellas, all he did was nick his girlfriend. <laughs> Obviously, we wouldn't show two girls kissing just to be gratuitous. But did you see Claire on Bookside going all leisure? Have a look at this. <laughs> Amazing how many times we had to do that shot again. The, the boom kept dipping in every time. You should be worried about any booms dipping in that shot. <laughs> Quite the opposite, Phil, eh? Did you actually go core when that was on Ainsley? Yeah. I think mean, you went core. Oh, I haven't heard that since about 1973. <laughs> uh, so there you go. We've, already had, we've had two, uh, two gay kisses on the show so far. I wonder if Phil and Julian would like to get together and make it a hat trick. <laughs> Which end? <laughs> Dealer's choice. <laughs> you know, I love the gritty realism of Brookside. Uh, I remember being pleasantly shocked by the first episode where bloody, frigging, piss, dickhead, bugger and divvy all appeared. Although within a year, those characters had all been written out. <laughs> so congratulations, you got that one. Uh, Julian, Lisa and Nasty, what links these three clips? Peter Howarth from Bread. Seeing someone he knows? Just a few of the galaxy of stars crowding tonight's ceremony. Well, I love girls like me, you know, I swear in it. Well, yeah, I am, but I'm fantastic, me, like, yeah, yeah. Les deux points de ce jeu. Regardez les bébés qui tirent. Ils sont obligés de franchir des bosses. Et voilà que le premier qui va vouloir quitter, c'est le bébé. Come on, Ainsley, join me. Quoa! Quoa! I think this breast is real or false. I thought it was Cher going too far. <laughs> and as for the awards, what, what, what kind of galaxy of stars were they? Was it, was it the shopping channel? <laughs> <laughs> Try not to nod off. No, 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 no. It was that chat from Bread, wasn't it? I saw him. Yeah. So you got milk, bread and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Les Dennis doing his Nelson Mandela impression. <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps it's a Posture. story of tits. Les Dennis is a tit, and I think it's the National TV Awards at the Albert Hall this year when Judy Finnegan's breasts were exposed sadly to the nation. Did you see that particular clip when it went out? I was, I was there. You were there? Oh, how exciting. Oh, it was. <laughs> How does it feel being a celebrity? <laughs> For no particular reason. <laughs> but Nick, it must have been weird, joking aside, it must have been weird for you to go in that house, not, not completely unknown, obviously you had a circle of friends and family, but to be unknown to the general public, and then to come out, you know, a household name like, like Toilet Duck or Anusol. <laughs> <laughs> You are quite right. This is the moment when Les Dennis and the viewing public copped an eyeful of Judy Finnegan's magnificently motherly mammaries unfurling. <laughs> I mean, well, how do you follow that? Well, if you don't know, none of us do, Richard. <laughs> that is probably the last time, unfortunately, that you'll see that pair out in public. Although, on a serious note, we do wish Les and Amanda the very best. <laughs> Booing? <laughs> Richard and Judy once gave a middle-aged man Viagra live on air. It was the first time in years that Fred the Weatherman was able to point to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, TV watchdogs investigated Richard and Judy's midday money quiz because the questions were almost illegally easy. Now, we've got some genuine questions here. These are genuine questions that were on their famous midday money quiz. I want you to just see how well you do here. For one bonus point each, fingers on the buzzers, team. OK, here we go. What colour is grass? <laughs> is it A, blue, <laughs> B, red? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, do you? Green. It's Jonathan. green, you see, that was a genuine question. But under Richard and Judy's rules, I could have accepted almost any answer. <laughs> they once asked which country border Portugal, and Richard thought Tenerife was okay. <laughs> and when they, and when they asked, 
And when they asked, who is Emma Noble married to, Richard accepted, thingy. <laughs> Fingers back on the bus, it's one more. Here's another of the midday muddy questions. Are you ready? Here's a genuine question. What's longer, a metre or a mile? Julian. Thingy. <laughs> I will accept that. That's close <laughs> enough. Let's have a look at the points at the end of that round. Or you, you both did well in that little bonus round there. So uh, that means Phil Sim have got four points, but your neck and neck, Julian's, you've got four points as well. It is time for Opportunity Knockers, where we celebrate the extraordinary talents of ordinary people. Well, we celebrate for a bit, then we mock them. One of three acts from yesteryear you're about to see is still performing today. But which one is it? First up from New Faces, in 1978, singing Stevie Wonder's All Is Fair In Love, a man who needs no introduction, except perhaps his name. It's Mr Colin Anthony. All is fair in love Love's a crazy game Two people vow to stay Is he enough duty none? <laughs> In love is one they say If you put Orville the Duck out there, he'd be a dead ringer, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, our second RT shot to obscurity on the David Essex Showcase in 1982. It is, get ready for this one, Barbara Rosenblatt. Sweet Lord. <laughs> She's only sings the body form adverts. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she singing to a home pride man? <laughs> Scotty, there's a fat bird in the transporter room. <laughs> Finally, we present a band known rather generously as the poor man's Wurzels. From New Faces, it is of course Trotto. Well, Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. What kind of hellish fruit machine is that? <laughs> burn, burn, beard. Yeah. Nudge the beard, nudge the beard. <laughs> Some of that's his own beard, isn't it? And then no. there's, there's a false one attached. I don't know, I think it's no. all grown. I think he styled it thus. Well, very, very ill-conceived, sort of Rory McGrath look. <laughs> <laughs> the horrible look of that sort of hairy mouth has destroyed all the pleasant memories yes. I've stored up of Judy Finnegan's tits. <laughs> In what way? I'm taking out nothing now. Well, you know when you store up an image for later use. <laughs> and that will now interfere with that image. Well, that, I'll be thinking about Judy. Thinking about those magnificent, juddery, motherly breasts. Thinking about burying my face in them, just like that. Just going <laughs> completely. I'll be pretending I'm Richard for half an hour, just loving every second of it. You'd be like poking your head between a couple of bald Australian lifeguards. And then, <laughs> suddenly, old Trotto with his hairy mouth will come up and say, Can I be next? And I'll be <laughs> devastated. Do you anything intelligent to say? <laughs> Now's your moment. Go on, make up something. You're good at that. Wow. <laughs> Tell us about when you were a spaceman. <laughs> <laughs> My wallet's missing. <laughs> it's got to be him. It's got to be the, the bearded man. You reckon it's the guy? Yeah, it's got to be Trotto. What do you, you see, you've done the clubs. Guy. Did you used to sing on cruises as well? I did, yeah. And what's that like? Because when I went on a cruise once very briefly, and it was very largely elderly or insane people, it seemed to be. It is. They said, you, on the world cruise, a lot of, um, I shouldn't say this, God forgive me, but a lot of the families send the parents on to die on a world cruise. <laughs> and sometimes, I've got this story right, won't take long. This guy died on a cruise ship, right? Well, he was a performer who just didn't go down well. No, no, he, 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 was a, he was a passenger. Because we've all had nights like that, haven't we, Phil? <laughs> he was a passenger, right, and I won't say what line it is. And um, he died, and he's with his wife, and they're going to do the burial at sea. And they get, like, a little slide, and they put the body in a sack and slide the body down the sack, right, into the sea. Honest to God. And everyone's praying. Yeah, everyone's praying. So you've got the officers there, and the priest and the captain are comforting the widow, and the officers are there waiting with the slide, and they say... Right, what we'll do is we'll practice, you know, with the body. Just get practice, you know, go like this. 
So they get it on, they're just like that, getting it ready to tilt, getting it ready to tilt. The ship rocks and the body went into the sea <laughs> before the priest had arrived and the wife. So the priest and the wife are coming along and the boss, what are we going to do? So they send down to the galley and they get a sack of spuds. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, get a sack of spuds. And the wife and the priest and they have to do this whole service to this sack of spuds <laughs> and then over the side of the ship. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that like a dolphin came up balancing the body on the <laughs> On oh. And also, for a horrible moment, I thought you said they sent down the kitchen for one of the illegal immigrants working. <laughs> <laughs> Whack him on the head with the omelette pan, bingo, no one knows the difference. Uh, do you have an opinion as to who it might be? Well, I think it's the guy uh, on the right. Well, I don't. Well, <laughs> I, don't. I think it's someone in the pink, she's singing the body for me. I words. think you and I were in proper showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> These things. Okay, Nick, rise above it, rise above it, rise above it. Barbara Rosen, smart, whatever. Barbara Rosenblatt, you think Barbara Rosenblatt is still I, working in show business? I thought though? she was good. Okay. You did not think she was good. I, <laughs> genuinely, as sure as I'm riding this bicycle, I think. <laughs> I think it's the first guy. You think it's Colin Anthony? Colin Anthony. Who is yeah. now singing in a branch of World of Leather on the North Circular Road. Yeah. Well, <laughs> she'll have no voice left, that one in the middle. Well, it she? falls yeah. now to me to tell you that still going strong after all these years is Barbara Rosenblatt. Oh. She's still going oh. strong. She's still performing in New York City. I didn't know they had a Pontins in New York City, but there you go. <laughs> and she was kind enough to send us this message. Hello, Jonathan and attractive panel. I'm so delighted you derived so much glee from my hiccup of 1982. Well, you know what they say, there's only one thing worse than being talked about. So there you go, and uh, she's absolutely right. There is only one thing worse than being talked about, and we've just seen it, it was her performing. So um, <laughs> that means with points at the end of that round are you, Phil and co have four points, but Julian, you're way in the lead with seven. Congratulations. Oh, Well, I've been looking forward to this. Our next round is channel hopping, where our guests have to act out clues to five TV themes for our captains to guess. Ainsley and Claire, if you'd like to make your way round the back to the TV behind me. Phil, here are your humorous Bob the Builder earmuffs. Hey, nice. Here's remote control. You have 90 seconds to start hopping from now. Monkey. Correct. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as <laughs> Postman Pat. Well done. The A T. Fantastic. <laughs> well done, guys. That's a good new look for Ainsley there, isn't it? <laughs> Channel 5. <laughs> bah, bah. <laughs> wow! That's remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'll thank you. Play your cards right. Yes. Oh, chips! Chips! Well done. Congratulations, guys. Excellent work. Very good. Marvellous. In fact. Excellent work. Ainsley, you look good in that. Amazing. Julian? Wow. Your teammates have already made their way back. Here are your uh, <coughs> headphones in honour of Bill and Ben. <laughs> Go on, you know you want to. Go on. My agent shall hear about this. <laughs> I'm sure the producer will as well after the show. <laughs> you know what? I think that was on the catwalk in last season's go to you. <laughs> Here we go. Are you ready, Julian? Yes. Start hopping. <laughs> oh, and um, Charlie Ground Force. Ground Force. <laughs> University challenge? Is yes. That simple? So what you see is that simple. Ages? <laughs> no. What an awful jumper. <laughs> A 
don't know that one. Okay. That's a tough one. By the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Look at me while you're doing it. <laughs> Is that acting? <laughs> Half the magic track. Yes, Julian. <laughs> Due south. Due south, yeah, you have one again. Number three. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're out of time. You're out of time. <laughs> well done, you did very well. That's right, that was a tough one. The one you didn't get was Airwolf. Air what? Airwolf. What's that? Airwolf was a TV show about a bloke in a little plane, <laughs> and it was wolf there, and, and it was meant to be hair, like German. Hair it's wolf. my German sausage uh, I was going to bring down for you. It was obscure. You. We want some research of five. <laughs> <laughs> you just want some of five because you had to wear a flower pot on your head. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Well, congratulations both of you. You did a bit of catching up. You've now got nine points, but Julian's team, you guys have got 11. <laughs> Everyone knows that Granny knows best, unless, of course, you're asking them for the lyrics to Eminem's Stan. <laughs> In this round, our teams have to guess which TV programme or personality our four favourite OAPs are talking about. Now, if you want to play along at home, then look away now. For five points, then, who or what is this? The first one I would pick out, this is quite true, is the coffee cream. And I don't like coffee. It's not a soap, it's not a... A situation, uh, it's like a talent show, isn't it, really? But coffee cream. <laughs> and I don't just go like that, I just push it all in my mouth. I just go and nibble it. <laughs> I can after eight, you know, it was beautiful. Oh, I thought I felt so boring. I mean, just wanted to get up and wander out of the room and come back, and you know, it was so boring. Yes, I'd take my silk nighty, definitely. <laughs> take my silk nighty, and um, my hot water bottle. And my cover to put on it. That's what, that is a luxury because I do have cold feet. I have a warm heart, but I have cold feet. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, um, Phil, your team first. Who or what do you think they were talking about? Yeah, lovely chocolate. She wants to take out water bottle there. Is that Holiday Inn in Ipswich? <laughs> <laughs> Ready, steady, cook? Could be. Do you want to make a guess? Do you make a lot of coffee creams on Ready, steady, cook? <laughs> What's the no, silk night? Like you have to do it? Mumble amongst yourselves, I'll go to Julian and I'll come back for your answer. Alright, right. okay. Julian, what do you think? Any thoughts, guys? I'm quite scared of Ada. <laughs> <laughs> she looks an awful lot like David Gower, didn't she? Have you noticed? Matter of fact, come to think of it, all the older ladies look like David Gower. <laughs> I'm a view it, no look, well, joined I, up writing. It is, yes. I put the 1940s house, because the way they were gibbering on, it would seem that they were talking about... Uh, so I can see what you think, that's good thinking. What are you doing with your left hand? <laughs> You got any guesses? Uh, not really. What have you written down? Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's known for its coffee creams. Yeah, it was a wild guess. It was a wild guess. Well, yeah, it's nice to see you working. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, it wasn't uh, that. You, you got any guesses or should we move on? Ready, steady, cook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fingers on the buzzers. Buzz in when you think you have it. You get the points <coughs> that are left on the screen. Take it away, old folks. Is that the one where they're doing the exercise? Is it with the um, bikes? It's at the bikes, yeah, but they're rehearsing and on the two wheeler. Is that the two wheeler? You know, where they're they're trying to get their some some can make it and some can't. They have to keep trying to game, practicing, till they get it right, aren't they? Lisa. Is it gladiators? No, it is not gladiators. Oh. And just because she couldn't get right, she would she were throwing things about, throwing things. About. Well, it, how the devil did she expect to? Do it properly, just in one, just in a room. It looked like a big ranch house from the outside. I'm not sure if it, it was on an island somewhere or, or not. You know, like maybe the island. Julia. Was it your, was it your say, Big Brother? It was Big Brother. Congratulations. <laughs> Chocolate digestives. Yeah, coffee you, see, you, you could have bought in some coffee creams, couldn't you? Right. <laughs> you got Because you, because you smuggled in uh, a mobile phone and a lot of personal problems. <laughs> 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 
let's uh, have a look at the rest of the clip and see what else they had to say about the Big Brother show. I mean, they were an ill-assorted lot of people got together, weren't they? They'd never done acting or been on the television before, which showed up quite plainly, I think. <laughs> he in the house of cheating, and he did get caught out, and he got slung out anyhow. However, unfortunately, I can't remember what his name was. <laughs> yeah, and there was, there were, was it Rob? Maybe it was Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, can you remember his name? <laughs> In March, five stars thought to include Sarah Cox, Jack Dee and Anthea Turner are taking part in Celebrity Big Brother. Anthea is favourite to be last to leave the house, mainly because she'll probably be buried under the patio. <laughs> Since the uh, last series, we've been inundated with uh, a letter asking for salacious facts about our fab foursome. So this week it's Granny Ada, who tells us her favourite hobby is watching local pantomime. Nick, I imagine you're looking forward to getting a bit of work in pantomime later this year? Oh, I'd love to, yeah. Yeah, so uh, if, you, if you want to help Nick out, make sure you go and buy a choc ice when he's up there. <laughs> The points at the end of that round are you, Phil, and Co. have nine points. A bit of catching up still to do in our final round because, Julian, you're way in the lead. You have 13 points. <laughs> We finish the show tonight with Who Said That? So, fingers on the buzzers, team. I'm going to read you out some sayings from a popular show. You have to tell me who said it originally. I'll help you along with some of my spot-on impersonations. OK, you ready? Here we go. Son, when you participate in sporting events, there's no whether you win or lose, it's how drunk you get. <laughs> Sue Barker. <laughs> Listen to the voice. It's on. Nick. Uh, Tony Blair to his son, Ewan. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's Homer Simpson. It's Homer Simpson. Congratulations. OK, here's the next one. This calls for some tonic wine and a sponge finger. I'll do that one. Yes, Julia. please. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Overall. It is Mrs. Overall. OK. I don't think he realises what hard work it is. Oh, I can't do that one. What hard work it is for me carrying another person around. Frank Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's Denise Royal. It is Denise Royal from the, the Royal Family. It looks just like the runway at Heathrow. My proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> Judith Chalmers. No, it's Jeremy Spake, your look-alike. Oh. The, the male Judith is the like <laughs> Do your impression. Do your impression, Phil. Well, I've been, I've been working for Aeroflot for many years now. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I'm going to be driving a tank. Uh, here's another one. If you weren't quite so big, it would be time for Mr. and Mrs. Spank to pay a visit to Bottyland. Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> no, but great answer. Uh, it's Nursey from Blackadder. It is Nursey from Blackadder. The balls are now rolling. Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Winton. It is Dale. <laughs> Lovely Dale. Now you may think that I'm wearing a perfectly ordinary pair of swimming trunks, but underneath the belt is a secret weapon. John Noakes. It is John Noakes. Congratulations. That brings us to the end. Oh, that brings us to the end of our quick fire round. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence, just as I'd run out of questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I see that the score at the end of the show, Phil's team, you have 12 points. Julian's team, you're this week's winners. 16 points. Congratulations to you. Well done. Commiserations. I would like to thank Phil, Ainsley and Claire. Thank you very much. And of course, Julian, Lisa and Nasty. Now, you can put the pets out. If you're thinking of strangling your wife, you've got a 30-second window as we play out with Babs Rosenblatt's crying. Good night, everybody. Crying!